absence of the a firm endpoint diagnostic of a complete rupture. So if there is no any resistance at the uh, end feet, that means that um, uh, the ligament is completely ruptured. Uh, if, I hope you guys are understanding at this stage now. Am I going in the right pace, Punita? Can you please check it out? Is it okay? Am I, uh, am I going in the right pace? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Okay, no problem. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's move on to the, what are the difficulties uh, in uh, stress testing. Uh, one is a pain, as I explained to you, uh, and uh, patient guarding. Patient is uh, protecting their movement because they are already feeling very tenderness around there. They don't want uh, the others touching their hand, or touching the thumb to give a, a more like a reliable uh, movement of the thumb. They will be like a guarding. They don't want to let you touch it, let, let you mobilize the thumb because they feel that's a little bit of scary about whether you're going to dislocate the thumb. Lack of a uh, lack of a consistent force unless in the hands of an experienced clinician. So uh, reliability is a key factor in terms of assessing this one. If you are mm, if you are a, like a practice just an entry level practitioner practitioner or a student assessing the client, definitely uh, lack of consistently uh, providing of force to the ulnar collateral ligament uh, will be uh, vary. Uh, it, Sometimes you may give a little bit of too much pressure on uh, ulnar collateral ligament area, which causing 50% uh, fiber uh, rupturing can be a full ligament injury. Um, so that's something that you need to practice. You you guys have to practice between you. Uh, check it out uh, uh, how how much stable the thumb you have it, and then have a feeling of uh, the motor motor memory in your uh, the muscle memory when you're testing it, and then uh, when you have a case uh, of unlock collateral ligament in your department or uh, um, hand clinic, uh, you have opportunity to learn from there. Uh, and another area of uh, uh, checking it out, unlock collateral ligament, injection of a local anesthetic has been reported to increase accuracy of the assessment. So they they put a, a <coughs> local anesthetic uh, to the unlock collateral ligament um, area so that the patient cannot feel anything or sometimes uh, they, they they numb the uh, do, dorsal uh, radial sensory nerve to calm down the part of the thumb so you can clearly uh, mobilize the thumb to see how much uh, percentage of uh, the ligament laxity happening or happening. Um, the another way of uh, testing stress loading uh, with the plain flame, uh, stress plain flames have been used in a diagnostic. So, while x-raying it, you can check it out, uh, the stress loading on top of the tip, uh, tip of the thumb to see how much uh, sag or uh, lagging happening. So through this one, you can find out how much uh, um, uh, laxity and instability is um, available at uh, unmarkular ligament. Uh, Define this, if, if there is instability, it can be divided as a greater than 30 degree abduction on uh, stress limbs and joint opening greater than or equal to 10 degree. So th these are the methods and the best method is uh, ultrasound. Ultrasound can correctly identify ulnar collateral ligament pathology and severity. Operator dependent and misdiagnosis seen in the following situation. One that may be a old discarding uh, at uh, UCL area and delays in imaging of more than one week allowing torn ligament to shrink. So it start contracting. So that means if it's contracting, you can see um, the thickness of the scar tissue around that area, which will uh, miss diagnosing whether there is a standard lesion or uh, whether there is a, a full thickness of the tear of the collateral ligament. Dislocation of the palmar as well as the joint capsule to the ulnar portion of the joint space, uh, similar etching a non-displaced uh, UCL tear. So sometimes, you know, you, you need to go through all that one up. So it's all an experienced uh, sonographer, um, operator independent, and they have to have a good experience in terms of uh, getting this ultrasound down. Uh, so they also do the scalping of the um, adductor pollicis muscle aponeurysis due to the displaced UCL simulating a non-displaced UCL tear. So these things are uh, very important to identify uh, a proper 
collateral ligament before we put in a management. Uh, yeah, review of UCL injury diagnosis identified uh, three level. One studies from uh, uh, US with an average of specificity of 81% and sensitivity of 76%, and it gives you accuracy of 81%. And a positive predictive value would be 74%, and a negative predictive value would be 87 If you look into that negative predictive value, would be 87 which is quite higher, uh, which also uh, uh, indication that uh, the ultrasound also is not 100% of diagnostic tool to assess the collateral ligament. So one of these studies concluded that um, um, ultrasound is not adequate in detecting the displaced UCL with uh, an incorrect diagnosis of about 50% of cases. So uh, we have another diagnostic tool called uh, MRI. MRI uh, would be a gold standard one to assess the uh, collateral ligament injury. Uh, in in other, another study, uh, a number of other levels uh, existing with the sensitivity of uh, 83 to 100 percent, specificity of 75 percent to 100, and positive predictive value of 87.5 to 100 percent, and it gives the accuracy between 75 to 100 percent. So there are definitely uh, uh, more than 75 percent of predictive uh, predictive value that can match. There is a, a collateral ligament damage, but if you wanted to picking up exact locations and accessory uh, injuries, you may be needing uh, the higher level of um, diagnostic investigation process. Uh, there is another author, Melville, reports 100% of accuracy in differentiating displaced from non-displaced full thickness of tears if there is a non-visualization of UCL fibers and presence of heterogeneous mass proximal to the MCP joint. Doppler, Doppler study may increase a confidence in diagnosis due to the increased vascularity in a repair case. Uh, that gives an indication how much damage it happens and how much severity of the conditions um, happened at the collateral ligament area. Dynamic ultrasound, also another method of uh, evalu evaluating the UCL injuries with the valgus stress, may assist in diagnosing displaced lesions and need to identify a you know, widening of the joint space, allowing joint fluid to extend into the tear. It's quite extensive studies. I don't know whether that, uh, this is possible. Uh, possibly that uh, the doctors are uh, referring uh, to get a right diagnostic tool uh, for the patients with the uh, ulnar collateral ligament injury. May all, it, it may, I just want you to let you guys, these are the uh, available um, uh, investigation process available to find out uh, collateral ligament damages so that we can come a right diagnosis, which means the management would be a right management, which means that the patient can uh, heal better, return back to function better, return back to daily activities of daily living and work activities. As I said that uh, the gold standard is, would be a uh, MRI. MRI reported uh, uh, no level one studies that is definitely not uh, level one or a uh, uh, under person studies available to find out MRI the best. There are uh, clinical examination, there are film, X-ray films, and ultrasound. It's all three of them really helps uh, to identify the collateral ligament injury. So you you cannot prove only uh, MRI can uh, you know identify this kind of conditions. Uh, there are studies available, including a number of uh, cadaver studies that report sensitivity uh, and specificity between 95 percent to 100 percent, which is really uh, much better much better compared to uh, ultrasound. Exception to the studies and early studies, which found 100% of sensitivity for a displaced tag, which is very easy to find out. Uh, 67 to 94% specificity for all tear around displaced tear rest. On MRI, the yo-yo on string appearance was suggestive of a standard lesion because the, the string of uh, uh, ulnar collateral ligament attract to the uh, adductor pollicis aponeurosis. So there is a uh, sting feeling like a yo-yo on a string. That a comparative cadaver study of orthography, low and high field MRI and magn MR orthography demonstrated that high field and superior with the sensitivity and specificity of 100%. Uh, which means that they, they put some dye uh, into the ulnar collateral ligament area to find out uh, the, uh, how much damage or hemorrhage around that area will give you a different color coding of the collateral ligament damage. 
uh, which will be very uh, highly recommendable and also it provides accuracy of 100 percent a further comparative study uh, by Hergen et al imaged a patient with uh, ultrasound and mri prior to the surgery two of the 17 patients were incorrectly diagnosed on ultrasound mri is 100 percent specific as i said that mri at this stage uh, right now we have mri the gold standard uh, investigation tool to find out uh, soft tissue damage and connective tissue damage Arthrography, arthrography, applying X ray arthrography may assist in the diagnosing of ulnar collateral ligament injury. And cadaver study found accuracy of sensitivity and specificity to be around 83, 93, and 50% uh, identification of the tear. And also, it can provide a displaced tear around 61%. And if the heads of the uh, adductor pollicis muscles are identified in arthrography, it has been found in a to be a specific or a complete tear of UCL. So main main idea is to find out the adductor pollicis head, uh, and then uh, if they can't find the head, that could be a stenosis lesion that you can find it from the orthography. No studies were found to be correlated orthography and surgical findings. So obviously uh, the surgeons, uh, uh, when they are doing the surgery or uh, uh, identifying these injuries at the theater, uh, they can and identify whether it's efficient, uh, fluid in the joint, what plate injuries or a dorsal wood or capsule injuries on the dorsal side of the thumb. So under differential diagnosis, it could be a, um, there might be a possibilities of a radial collateral ligament injury also uh, possible uh, around the thumb and declarence uh, tenosynovitis uh, and arthritis. So when the patient is complaining about uh, the symptoms on the pain, swelling, stiffness, and tenderness on the uh, ulnar side of the thumb, not necessarily come a conclusion that uh, collateral ligament, ulnar collateral ligament injury, there might be a possibility that uh, RCL injury also possible, and dequarians, uh, tenosynovitis, and there might be possibilities of arthritis. Classifications, as you can see, uh, in this uh, five picture that um, the, the first picture shows the normal uh, length and thought of the ulnar collateral ligament injury, uh, ulnar collateral ligament. And in the second, there might be a sprained ligament. Uh, there's a thickness of the collateral ligament. And there's a fluid collections around that area shows the thickness of the collateral ligament. And then if you could see in the middle, there is a, a partial thickness there that if you can see the thickness, it could be a 50% of the uh, ulnar collateral ligament is sprained it or damaged it. And if you could see the complete avulsion, avulsion fracture of the full thickness tear of the ulnar collateral ligament in here, um, sorry, uh, the last one would be stenosis lesion where the, the distal part of the collateral ligament pulled into the adductor pollicis aponeurosis. Uh, and there are uh, uh, so much gap in between the proximal phalanx uh, to the MCP area where you can see uh, the gap filling can be a full of uh, scar tissue or a fluid collection that needs to be surgically intervened. And so what are the management classifications? Uh, type 1 fracture and displaced fracture needs a uh, undisplaced fracture needs a conservative management. Uh, and uh, second type fracture and displaced uh, it, either it could be a 30% fracture or uh, it's undisplaced fracture. But if the fracture is uh, more than 30% and it's been displaced, uh, there is a chance that a surgical intervention needed. And if the ligament is stable, but as I said, like uh, grade one would be 25% uh, of uh, strained ligament, 50% would be uh, partial thickness tear, and then um, a full thickness at 100%. Um, stable ligament tear would be uh, grade one and grade two, uh, needing uh, a conservative management. An unstable ligament, it could be more than 75% of uh, ligament tear happen, then it would be uh, instabling the uh, joint and it gives you a surgical intervention. And volar lip fracture or volar plate fracture, uh, it, you would need a, a conservative management because the size of the volar plate or the chunk of the tiny bone cannot be fixed uh, through the uh, K wire or uh, uh, any screw or some, and it is it is undisplaced, so it cannot be uh, surgically uh, treated. So it need to be conservatively treated. 
uh, in the last classification is a uh, alveolar fracture and ligament tear. Uh, there is uh, another fracture and the ligament tear together, and you need a surgical intervention. So, uh, in, a, in our therapy area, what can we do? Uh, what can be done for the conservative management? Conservative management in an MCP immobilization splint or a plaster uh, for a four to six weeks is recommended. What we follow here is um, as soon as we have a, a, a referral from the GP or a hand surgeon, uh, we don't use a plaster, plaster of Paris or POP here. Uh, splint, uh, um, hand-based uh, pump spike, short pump spike or splint immobilizing the MCP joint for a six weeks time. Uh, four to six weeks can be, uh, if there's a grade one sprain, uh, four weeks would be good. Uh, in grade two or 50% uh, of partial thickness tear, you need to have a six, six weeks of uh, immobil immobilizing the MCP joint uh, and IP joint should be mobilizing it and the fingers should be free and the wrist should be free. Um, there are, uh, in a grade one, three or five injuries and spine partial tears, Less than 30% valgus laxity in extension, less than 50% in between the side, and no evidence of avulsion fracture, it can be treated as uh, in a conservative management. Splint uh, or plaster pump spiker, uh, preferably immobilizing the MCP joint only, so leaving the IP joint free for uh, opposition, uh, action of opposition, and maintaining the web space, the first web space. Uh, and the MCP joint should be in a slight flexion uh, so that, uh, the, as we said, that the proper ligament can get tighter. Uh, that when the proper ligament gets tight, uh, the, the amount of scar tissue is really good, so it can stabilize uh, the collateral ligament really good, and it can stabilize the thumb really very well. And gentle stress into ulnar deviation would always give you a little bit of check on the ligament to uh, immobilize it. Uh, some uh, the, the, the first one is the thermoplastic splint is very common that uh, we are we are using it all the time. Uh, probably in an emergency department where you get a referral from the emergency department, you will get it a uh, referral letter from the ED along with the uh, the uh, plaster uh, along with the fiberglass uh, plaster cast like that on the red color. And the client will come up with that kind of the big plaster cast and asking you to do a treatment for this kind of condition. Uh, but they don't need to be in that kind of plastic cast. Uh, you can uh, cut that plastic cast and then put a splint on and then immobilize that MCP joint for uh, four to six weeks and allow the wrist to mobilize it, allow the fingers to mobilize, allow the IP joint to get going. Um, a splint versus a plaster uh, a thumb spike, a randomized control trial comparing POP to splint. Both should be effective with uh, regardless of uh, stability, range of movement and strength, and the length of uh, a stick leg. Patient preferred a splint for comfort because it, it is uh, breathable, it is lightweight, uh, it's also like uh, it can be removable. Uh, it can be removable for uh, personal hygienic purposes. At the same time, it still needs to be keep it in immobilized while they are doing the showering and everything. This is probably the universal. Uh, Splint pattern for a short pump spiker. Uh, this is the one I did from a long time ago, and I, now it's all in, uh, without even seeing the patient hand, I just start drawing this pattern and then uh, cut the plastic and then put it in a patient around the, the thumb, uh, start immobilizing it, uh, and then get going for a six weeks time. Conservative management progression. Uh, at uh, four weeks time, if it's a grade one, you can start gentle range of movement, commencing um, between like op 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 start doing opposition, op opposition to index finger, middle finger, and the ring finger. We use a Kapanji, Kapanji scoring for a thumb a range of movement for opposition. So at four weeks time, I would encourage uh, the patient to start with uh, uh, up to K6, which is, which is ahead of the little finger. And then uh, six weeks later, they can go the first and second and third crease of the little finger up to uh, K9, which is the base of the little finger. Uh, so splint can be between the exercises for uh, providing the stability and allowing the reinforcement. At six weeks time, splint at, 
student needs to be uh, uh, writing, at the, writing it at a high uh, risky situation where they have a specifically when the kids when they go to school they have to wear a splint or in, uh, shopping they have to wear a splint people to people conduct yes they should wear the splint um, at eight weeks time strengthening can commence uh, without any restriction unrestricted activities are avoided until 12 weeks time so any ligament if you take it uh, getting the uh, full stability at around uh, 12 weeks time so in case of any accident and knocking and bumping in be before that 12 weeks time you may have to extend the splint or uh, extend the uh, conservative management one week uh, extra bit consider taping at risk in case of uh, a, a lack of reinforcing you can also uh, use the taping for the risky situation uh, the outcomes outcomes following conservative management of uh, stable UCL injuries is generally good with minimal pain. The minimal pain would be uh, from the scar tissue, uh, good function and range on and no ongoing instability. So, uh, as we talk about the grade one and grade two can be successfully treated by conservative management without any uh, much instability. Uh, and so also there might be a little bit possibilities of minimal pain. Uh, depending on how much loading we are doing it around uh, between 8 to 12 weeks time. A number of studies recommended uh, non-surgical treatment of most of a, uh, an acute UCL avulsion fractures provided there is no lateral instability. So if there is an instability, obviously that uh, we could say at least a 75% of uh, ligament is torn. So we may have to refer to a surgical intervention. Uh, another outcomes um, in the studies done in 1999 series of series of 30 patients treated non-surgically with a, a proximal pharynx avulsion fracture excluded those with the 30 percent or more than 30 percent of articular surface involvement and fractures displaced proximal to adductor hood stability was not assessed and 19 patients are pain free 10 are mild pain and one moderate pain uh, 20 were examined with no differences in stability or grip and pinch strength. Three were considered unstable but had no limitation. There may be a possibility of uh, hypermobile joints for the, those three patients. In contrast, uh, in another study, 1997 reported ongoing problems with a small and minimal displaced avulsion fractures. Nine patients treated with a calf immobilization all had a persistent pain and diminished pinch and grip and lateral repair um, late repair was formed with a outcome so initially they tried with the conservative management uh, but they don't have that uh, uh, the pinch and gripping strength so then they reassessed it for the surgical management with a good outcome a recent review concluded that uh, surgical intervention is preferred as it is known to have a good and predictable result um, so in here uh, the, before we get the referral, the surgeon will check it out that stability of the thumb and uh, uh, refer to us. If it's, um, uh, the stability is good and there is no any chunk of or a lumpy uh, feel on the medial aspects of the thumb, the surgeon will send it to us straight away uh, for, a, for a hand based split. Surgical management, uh, literature supports surgical intervention in the following. 20% uh, of greater of joint surface involvement, greater than 2 mm displacement of aversion fracture, and substantial instability with the UCL testing. And sometimes there may be a, a, a radial collateral ligament also tear. Uh, and that is also required a surgical intervention. And retracted ligaments on ultrasound or MRI. Fracture, rotated fragments, and joint incongruity needed as surgical management. Surgical option, if the client comes to the surgeon straight away, direct repair uh, within the 10 days of uh, reported. If it is more than 10 days, uh, direct repair, uh, not possible. They may be needing a ligament reconstruction under tendon grafting. And uh, or if fracture fragments, arthrodesis. Uh, arthrodesis needed only for the uh, patient who are highly using the hand in terms of work. Like a mechanics, like a carpenter, uh, like like in a high industrial uh, work where they are using the thumb for all the reasons, um, the surgical intervention of repairing the ligament is not good enough to support the hand function. So they need arthrodesis or a fusing the joint. 
the another thing, arthroplasty, repairing the joint, uh, would probably needed for uh, uh, aged around uh, 65, where they are using it only limited functions of the thumb. First operative management, uh, repair or grafting, splint or plaster cast for four, four weeks to start with. And from what what, uh, what we used to get it from the day one or prior to booking the patient for the surgery, the nurse, the theater nurse, come and, uh, not the theater nurse, the doctor's nurse, they come and give us a reference and uh, discussing about uh, possible appointment. Uh, and then uh, they will have a co-appointment along with the nurse. You know, day uh, I tend to get uh, day two or day three uh, with a with a plaster cast on a hand uh, with a back slab. Sometimes uh, come to us and uh, as in a hand therapy, as a hand therapist, we tend to do a wound management as well to start with, including uh, different types of uh, wound management, wound care, and removing removing the stitches, removing the switches, uh, and then scar management and then mobility. Uh, so at uh, day three, we start working on uh, fabricating a splint, uh, swelling management, and then positioning of the uh, hand uh, elevation. All that can be discussed with the patient. Most important, reinforcing the uh, clients that uh, in around uh, 12 weeks time, they should be back to normal function. Uh, so in at around uh, three weeks time, uh, commencing gentle uh, range of movement, we can remove the splint for uh, uh, in a two weeks time, we take the stitches out. As soon as the stitches out, uh, we can ask the patient to uh, uh, can can uh, can shower uh, without uh, any protection needed for the hand, um, so that uh, you know we can start working on uh, scar management, uh, heat, uh, massaging the scar tissue, desensitizing the scar tissue, and gentle range of movement. The so splint uh, can be one between exercises at around six weeks time, uh, same as the conservative management, the splint needs to be for one at a high risk position. At eight weeks time, strengthening can commence and unrestricted activity and avoided until 12 weeks time. Surgical complications, um, there are, uh, in, in, we all know all these uh, complications very well. Uh, if surgeon is doing this collateral ligament uh, repair, uh, they'll be keeping in the mind, uh, reducing the infection, less pain, weakness, or ongoing instability, neuropraxy, or any nerve damage uh, during the surgery. And it is reported around 6.3% 6 6, 6 of uh, neuropraxia. And that can be treatable, that can be healable in around six weeks time, naturally. Subject to stiffness uh, in accessories with uh, arthritis and anything, it is reported around 3.9% of stiffness after the surgical procedure. Surgical outcome, the large study from 90% of patients had a good outcomes uh, following a surgical intervention with a, a poorer outcome in those who had a delay in presentation. So it's very important to early identifying the conditions, reporting to the hand surgeon, and getting a referral in the early stages after the surgery, and uh, uh, appropriate splinting, appropriate position of the thumb, and mobilization, and then strengthening and returning back to uh, normal function. Consistently satisfactory outcome with the excellent pain relief, restoration of stability, and good pain strength achieved. Research limitations, uh, there are insuff uh, insufficient subject numbers, cadaver studies, and limited level one studies. We don't have any uh, limited uh, uh, one level, which is a high uh, consistent studies are not available, and few comparative studies only, and few studies correlated imaging studies, and clinical examinations, and surgical findings. We still have a uh, we still need a lot of number of uh, uh, studies required and the client's caseloads required to um, you know do a the best management for the center for the collateral ligament. This is a larger than uh, how to treat a collateral ligament injury. Um, if you all understand the clinical uh, assessment and this process can be followed evenly during the process of ulnar collateral ligament injury. So these are the references and. It's one of the commonest uh, conditions uh, that uh, we treat in Australia. And throughout Australia, uh, the management would be the same, no matter of how much damage happened. And we have a very good uh, interaction uh, from the hand surgeon. We, I, I work with the hand surgeon in our uh, echo hand therapy. We have a 
35 hand surgeons in our board. Um, we have um, uh, we have a therapist doing a co-appointment along with the surgeons. Uh, I work in a, uh, I work along with the two hand surgeons next door. Uh, so we have uh, ongoing communications always happening. Uh, whenever the clients come, goes to the doctor's room, I tend to go and discuss with that outcome, discuss with the strength, discuss with the stability of the uh, thumb. Uh, it's all. It's it's not only like one person success. It's all a team. Uh, involvement, uh, team success. Uh, our aim is to making sure that the client should go back to a normal work activity in around 12 to 15 weeks time after the conservative management or conservatively treated or uh, uh, surgically treated. Uh, the maximum time that we needed is between 12 weeks to 15 weeks time after a surgery or after conservative management. So. These are the references. You can check it out. And thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the wonderful and practical oriented presentations. Carrying you after a long years, I think. <laughs> it's a really good presentation, sir. It's really even, practical even, um, that we well, are missing out here. Actually, yes, yes, because, because uh, in 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 a, in a Indian context, uh, in yeah. Indian context, that uh, they so most uh, of our students are not aware of the value of the of facial therapy role in orthopedic management yes. and hand therapy yes. management because they are always wanted to be with the pediatrics and neuro and psychiatric department, and I always uh, in I I always insist to students. To be uh, to go with the orthopedic and uh, this hand management therapy, which was very valuable for uh, patients with the fractures in uh, these ligament injuries. So it was really good presentation. So thank you, sir. Now it's a question hour. Students, you can ask your questions. Um, to sir, you can clear your doubts if you want to have. Students, do you have any? Any Somebody is asking Alexia. Alexia Vijayan asked about uh, there is a is there any protocol for a collateral ligament? Um, uh, we call protocol is not uh, just like a follow the procedure. It's a guidelines uh, guidelines towards the treatment. Uh, we don't follow any strict. Protocol. The protocol would be if it is a surgical. Uh, intervention needed then uh, four weeks time that you know you patient needs to in a splint in between the splint uh, and the treatment we can remove the splint and start mobilizing it nicely and gently uh, as long as you are not uh, uh, creating any radial deviation or uh, hyper abduction of the thumb uh, uh, you can start gently mobilizing it and st start working on a um, thumb opposition and tendon gliding exercises and then progresses. If you can control the pain, you control the stiffness, control the swelling, and control the scar tissue, you don't need any standard protocol. I used to remember uh, in India, like we always talk about protocol and protocol, and here the protocol it's just a guiding your treatment. Uh, you have to have a, uh, as a student, as a uh, therapist, you have to have your uh, uh, clinical justification. Uh, to prove that uh, because of this client has got these issues, I have deviated from my protocol. Protocol is not a strict rule here. As long as you have a clinical justification, that is very important. When we are learning uh, from the basics of uh, occupational therapy, um, uh, clinical justification uh, is very, very important to develop our knowledge and skill uh, so that you know you have a reason for that when you are treating the conditions that you know this is what i'm doing it and because of the reason to regain the stability to regain the uh, a proper mobility of the thumb and, and returning back to normal duty around uh, for you know, 8 to 12 weeks time and mobility if you find any lack of mobility or uh, increasing stiffness around the thumb so that that could be a possibility that you can keep working on uh, Scar management, desensitization, and that may that might be a possibility. As I said, the neuropraxia would be a possible reason. Sometimes the patient always feel a bit of pain, 
but neuropraxia is considered as a grade one or a level one uh, nerve injury, which can be healable uh, around the six weeks to uh, three months time. It's naturally healed. So sometimes patient will always feel pain uh, or pins and needles tinglish or uh, numbish a bit on the top. Uh, it can be uh, naturally treated. So I wouldn't stick with, uh, you know, like, like it's not a university questions that, you know, what is the protocol for a collateral ligament injury? Or it's not like that. Um, it is uh, in a clinical area, you have to have your own justification. And working in this hand therapy uh, protocol, if you ask me protocol, I don't have anything in your mind. But if you give me a patient that I can treat subconsciously because we have seen a plenty of uh, 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 collateral ligament uh, injuries so it's become a subconscious so as when you are a student yes you need a basics as punita said that you need to stand be 